I think it's probably fair to say that historically palliative care in Scotland uh, has not been well mapped. And so it's really great today to be able to welcome our next speaker, Hamilton Imbadas, to launch the, the Atlas, the Scottish Atlas of Palliative Care, and to tell us a bit about the work that's led to its publication today. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, great to be here um, in this and, and to be part of this great conference. <clears throat> Around the world, there is growing interest in mapping levels of palliative care provision. And some of this has led to various atlases of palliative care. The first of this kind uh, was published in 2007, the European Atlas of Palliative Care. And uh, it, it presented the development of uh, specialist palliative care in the 53 uh, European countries, 53 World Health Organization's European region. The second edition of this um, atlas was published in two, 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 2013. And then this was followed by the Latin American Atlas of Palliative Care in 2000, 2012. So this was one year earlier. Taking this uh, sort of regional mapping exercises to a global level, the World Health Organization and the, and the World Worldwide Palliative Care Alliance jointly published the Global Atlas of Palliative Care at the end, um, Palliative and End of Life Care in 2014. Now, I mentioned a few of the uh, the atlases that we know of um, in, the, in sort of regional areas uh, and on global level. The purpose of all these atlases is to shed light on the provision of palliative care as it existed in very <laughs> geographical contexts and to help assess the gap between what is available and what is the realized need of provision. In the, in the European atlases, um, that I mentioned earlier, the entry is for the United Kingdom. Uh, in, the, in the ranking exercises that, uh, that followed, uh, these, followed on from these uh, at, um, atlases, uh, the United King Kingdom appears on the top of the ranking, which is good news. However, we do not have a picture of palliative care development in Scotland from these. It is therefore necessary to have information about palliative care provision at the national level to inform the implementation of you know, strategic framework for action and policy making uh, in palliative care in general. Scotland has been seeing significant advances in, the, in, in, in this direction in the past few months. Last year, the Scottish Government's, uh, Scottish Parliament's Health and Sports Committee launched an inquiry into the quality and availability of palliative care in Scotland. In December last year, we saw the publication of the Strategic Framework for Action for Palliative and End of Life Care in Scotland as Scotland's direct response to the 2014 World Health Assembly resolution calling all the governments in the world to include and incorporate palliative care in their national health strategies. Yesterday evening, some of us were at the Scottish Parliament for the Hospice UK event, making the publication, uh, marking the event of the publication of their report, the role of hospice care in Scotland, another piece of vital source of information. All these and other Others have highlighted the need for better information about what palliative care provision is available at present in Scotland. The Audit Scotland report, a review of palliative care services in Scotland, published in 2008, provides a national level data, but it's eight years since this was published. 
The, the Glasgow End of Life Studies group, based in Dumfries, led by Professor David Clark, proposed the idea of ma mapping the current level of specialist palliative care provision in the country to Professor Craig White, the Divisional Clinical Lead for Healthcare Quality and Strategy Directorate at Scottish Government. And in the light of the commitment the government has made to support improvements in the collection, analysis, interpretation, and dissemination of data and evidence relating to needs, provision, activity, indicators, and outcome in respect of palliative and end of life care in the strategic framework for action. That's commitment number nine. The government commissioned this piece of work. For the purposes of comparability, about which I'll um, say more towards the end, we decided to follow the format of the European Atlas of Palliative Care, and we adapted it, um, adapted it as required to fit the Scottish palliative care landscape. Colleagues from the Atlantis, a palliative care research group at the University of Navarra in Spain, who developed the European Atlas, have very kindly offered us support in developing the and designing the uh, survey that we used for gathering data for the study. The layout of the maps and figures and the attractive design of the document also stem from their work. The data gathering work for the Scottish Atlas coincided with the preparation of the Scottish Public Health Network report, Palliative and End of Life Care in Scotland, the rationale for a public health approach published earlier this year. This opportunity led us to a collaboration with Dr. Michelle Gillies, clinical lecturer in public health who was leading this work on the Scottish Public Health Network. We set out to gather relevant data. We devised a strategy and approached the chief executive officers of the independent hospices in Scotland and the executive leads for palliative care for each national health board service, health service board. The result of this exercise is the collection of maps and figures that show levels and types of palliative care provision in each of the NHS board in Scotland. In addition, we worked with colleagues from various sectors to provide details on development of palliative care in the areas of policy, education, and sociocultural attitude, <clears throat> attitudes over many years. We are grateful to all who contributed to this in different ways. We do not claim that this atlas fills all the information gaps we have, we have about palliative care in Scotland, but we, but we believe that this is definitely an important step in the right direction. We are, hopefully, we are hopeful that this will lead to further investigation, exploring detailed analysis of specific aspects of palliative care development in Scotland. This is also to be taken as a work in progress. We have done our best to capture the current scene of palliative care in Scotland, but please do let us know if you spot that we have missed or misinterpreted anything here. We would be, hap we would be happy to incorporate these in our work. This wouldn't have been possible without help from so many people, Craig White, as I mentioned earlier, colleagues from Atlantis team in Spain, Amanda Ward, who helped, at, helped us in uh, data collection, Professor Scott Murray, who's here, uh, uh, who supported us throughout, and particularly with the expert comp uh, contribution on, on the uh, section on education. Um, <coughs> Uh, we are, we've been in constant uh, consultation with Mark Hazelwood um, at various stage of, stages of this work um, and also uh, got them to sense check, check the whole um, uh, document bef before we finalized it. So we are grateful for all of these and particularly also for all people from various uh, sectors who provided us with data and who organized it. Uh, Richard Mead is here, um, and then many others who have helped us. So a very big thank you to all of you. Uh, without your help, this wouldn't have been possible at all. Now, we have the data for Scotland that can be compared with other European countries. We will now be able to fit Scotland 
In the European ranking model, which was recently published in the Journal of Pain and Symptom Management, which we hope will lead to identify areas that may need attention so that access to palliative care and end-of-life care is made available to all who can benefit from it. The data represented in this atlas represents the scene at the time of the launch of the Scottish stra the strategic framework for action for palliative and end-of-life care. This would be a logical reference point for comparison in 2021 by which time the government hopes, as expressed in the strategic framework, to ensure that everyone who needs palliative care will have access to it. This is a first in more than one sense. This is the first Scottish Atlas of Palliative Care. But to our knowledge, this is the first Atlas of Palliative Care at the national level so far. We hope this will inspire other countries to follow, to engage in national level analysis of palliative care provision to identify gaps and to explore opportunities to deal with them. With that, on behalf of the authors, Professor David Clark and Dr. Michelle Gillies, I am so delighted to launch the Scottish Atlas of Palliative Care.